So I'm gonna show you how to get up and running with OBS Studio. Uh, we're gonna stream uh, right from scratch. We're gonna set up the entire uh, software here and actually get a stream running into Uscreen. So the first thing we're gonna do is um, obsproject.com is where you'll find OBS Studio. So we're just gonna download that. And then I'm gonna install it right here. And OBS is really nice. They don't try to get you to install any extra toolbars or anything like that. So you don't have to be careful during that installation process. You can just hit next, 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 install. And to start already, I have a live event created in use screen. So I already have my stream key ready here to input. And we're gonna launch this. So one of the cool things is they have this auto configuration wizard and we'll actually go ahead and run that and then optimize for streaming. Yep. Let's do that. And I mean, it should, it should grab some whatever good values here based on your computer. Um, I do have 1080p that I can use and 30 or 60 FPS uh, should be possible on my computer. And then under service, we're going to go to show all and you should see you screen here right in the list. And it's actually already asking for a stream key, so let's grab that. And yes, we will leave hardware encoding on and estimate bitrate with bandwidth test. So yeah, let's do all this. So what it's actually doing is sending a, a test live stream into Uscreen and then kind of seeing what works here based off my internet connection and my computer power. So it looks like it kind of pumped everything up to high quality. 10,000 bit rate is pretty high. Um, for most people doing 1080p, um, 6,000 is usually okay. Actually, I, I should say 6,000 is really good. Um, 10,000 might be a lot for um, some computers to handle. So just keep that in mind. But I mean, this, sh this should uh, do it according to your computer speed. So we'll go ahead and apply those settings. And now that we've done that, uh, there's one thing to note. So it did take my stream key already, but when you're streaming new streams in the future, uh, just click on settings there and then click stream. And this is where you're gonna paste in any new stream keys. And there's one final thing I want to actually set up here. So under output, I'm going to go to output mode and change that to advanced. And we're going to change this keyframe interval to two. And I think it's trying to reset this. It said I was good at 10,000. So I'm going to leave that there. We're going to hit okay. And I just want to look at those settings again after I've saved them. 10,000. Yeah. Okay, so that should be pretty good. So one of the things we need to do now is actually add a source. If I hit start streaming now, I'm just streaming this black screen. There's nothing actually going to use screen. So we'll hit um, this plus sources button. And then we're gonna go to video capture device. And that's a fancy name for basically your webcam or any um, camera that you might have plugged in there. So I'm gonna rename it to webcam. And there we go. It's going to recognize me already. I don't have to really do anything with that. And we're going to use that device default. Basically, we can hit OK. You can drag this around. You can resize it. Uh, there's lots of kind of options you can do there. So now we're going to hit Start Streaming. And then we're going to wait back here. And you need to wait about 15 seconds for this to um, appear. There's about that 15 second delay. So if I hit Test Player right now, What's gonna happen is that this is just gonna stay here blank forever. So I, I really do have to wait that time to hit test player. Um, and you'll know it's gonna work right away. You shouldn't have to wait on that screen. So this is it working. And you can see camera quality and everything should look pretty great there. So once you've done your test, it's fine to stop it. Make sure you run your test a few minutes before just in case you need to figure some uh, additional stuff out. Uh, but the next step is typically wait about 15 seconds before the countdown timer elapses. And remember, you set that um, start date on the event details page. So I have it for 9.30 a.m. And 15 seconds before 
what I'm going to do, I'm going to hit start streaming and go live together. And then right when I do that, I can actually start my event from the perspective of OBS here. So I wouldn't want to be standing around at this point because there is that 15 second delay. So basically, as soon as I hit start streaming there, I should be able to get up and do whatever I need to do and start talking to my audience or maybe I'm in front of a fitness class, something like that. So that should do it for our setup process here for OBS. Um, I hope you enjoyed the video and there's lots more to come like it.